Did you not see what your Rabb has done to the people of the elephant? Those who came with the elephant, the armies began to move towards the Kaaba. A big, huge elephant and there were armies that came with. No sooner did they come closer to it than they noticed birds from nowhere in the skies. When it dropped from there, the small pebbles went straight through these men and killed them on the spot. Allahu Akbar. Didn't Abdul Muttalib say that house has a Lord who will protect it? To this day, you need to remember the Kaaba is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born in the month of Rabi' al-Awwal and was born in a year called the year of the elephant. And a famous story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even made mention in the Quran al-Kareem, Surah Al-Fil, the chapter of the elephant. The Najashi, the Ethiopian king at that time, has conquered Yemen. And Abraha was the governor of Yemen under Najashi. Abraha was a Christian man. And in order to please Najashi, he says, I will build you a big cathedral. I will build you a cathedral, the like of which has not been built for any before you. So I will build you a church. So he set out and he built a monumental thing. You know, in those days, they say the pillars uh, were so tall, the towers, that if you looked up, your hat would fall. And the crosses had gold and silver on it, and the pulpit had ivory in it. It was a work of art. So he built this big church in honor of the Najashi, and he sent a message to the Najashi. He said, Ya Najashi, I built this huge, beautiful church in Yemen for you, in your honor. And I am going to order all of the Arabs to come and make pilgrimage to this church. And he wanted people to flock there for many reasons, to worship there as well as for business purposes. And he was told that, no, we have in Mecca, there is this house that everyone goes to and you need to deal with them if you want people to come here. So he sent the orders to the different tribes of the Arabs. Even though they were not Muwahideen, they were not people of Tawheed. And you know that the Kaaba was built by Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then after many years, Shirk came back into the Arabian Peninsula, as we spoke about before. So they were worshipping idols and they were worshipping other things as well, but they still kept their respect for the Kaaba. So they're getting this order. You have to go to Yemen and you have to make a pilgrimage to Qulais. Qulais was the name of the church that Abraha had built. So you have to come and you have to make pilgrimage to Qulais. So when they received this order, they were like, what is this Qulais? He thinks we're going to come and we're going to make pilgrimage to Qulais, to this church that he built. He thinks that that can take the place of the Kaaba. They got very angry. They got offended. How dare he thinks that we're going to do something like this. Historically, Arabs don't take insults very well. So when the Arabs heard that one of them took the long journey, went to his cathedral and defiled it. The man defecated in the corner. Abraha got very upset when he found that it is someone related to the Quraysh. He knew that the Arabs who have such great respect for the Kaaba in Mecca, they would never accept his command. They would never follow his order to make pilgrimage to Qulais unless the Kaaba was destroyed. So he saw that the Kaaba was an impediment in his way to get the people to come and make pilgrimage to Qulais. So from that point, he decided that he would destroy the Kaaba. So he gathered an army with the intention to go to Mecca and to destroy the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to destroy the Kaaba. So Abraha took a huge army, some say 70,000, and an Najashi sent a specifically, you know, a special elephant just for this purpose. So they say there were some 13 elephants, other scholars say 11 elephants, at the head of which was this mammoth of a thing, and the name of this elephant, this one has a name, it's called Mahmoud. The vast of narration say there was just one main big elephant, 
and they, they are some historians who say no it was a whole army of many elephants but the Quran speaks of one elephant al fil meaning one elephant so the people of the elephant a big huge elephant and there were armies that came with now of course the Arabs they are aware of what Abraha is trying to do it's not a secret they know that he's coming from Yemen on the way to Mecca to destroy the Kaaba and the Arabs they were not going to let him do this without a fight. They were not going to just say, okay, go ahead and do it. No, they were going to put their utmost resistance against him and try their best to stop him from doing this. But as we know, Abraha commanded a very strong army. His army was not a small army. It was a big and powerful army. So on his way, there was a man, a great man from the Arabs. He was a very well-respected man. His name was Dhu Nafar. And Dhu Nafar, he had a small army of Arabs and they said that, okay, whatever happens, we know that his army is much bigger than ours, but we can't just let him go unimpeded. We have to try, we have to do something. So on his way from Yemen to Mecca, the army, the small army of Dhu Nafar confronted Abraha and they fought. Abraha's army was easily able to overcome the army of Dhu Nafar. So they took Dhu Nafar as a prisoner. So they continue to go on the path. Now another group of Arabs also stops them and tries to fight them on the way. The leader of this group, he was a man named Nufail al Khuthumi, and he had a group of people from his tribe, from the tribe of Khuthum who tried to stop Abraha from continuing on his way to Mecca. But again, Abraha's army was able to overcome them as well. And they took Nufail al khuthumi as a prisoner. So they have Nufail al khuthumi and they have Dhu Nafar as two prisoners on their way. So they continue on their way. Now, they finally reach Ba'if. So they're very close to Mecca now. Ta'if is not far from Mecca. Now when they reach Ta'if, the sad thing is that the people of Ta'if, they showed a very cowardly attitude. Compared to Dhu Nafar and Nufail al khuthumi the people of Ta'if, the tribe of Thaqif, they showed a very cowardly response to Abraha. And they were afraid for themselves. They didn't want Abraha to destroy their city and kill their people. So they said, okay, you want to go to Mecca and destroy Mecca? We're not going to stand in your way. You go right ahead and do that. And the extent of their treason was so much that they actually offered Abraha. They said, we'll even send one of our people to go with you to show you how to get to Mecca, to show you Mecca from here. So there was a man named Abu Rughal. So Abu Rughal, he accompanies the army of Abraha and they're going from Ta'if towards Mecca. And Abu Rughal is actually showing them the way how to get to Mecca. So this was a huge treachery and betrayal. And just before they reach Mecca, they're close to Mecca, Abu Rughal, he dies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him to die. And he is buried there. Abu Rughal is buried on the way from Ta'if to Mecca. And later on in the years that came, the place where Abu Rughal was buried, his grave, it became a place where the Arabs would come to stone. They would come to the grave of, of Abu Rughal and they would stone that grave because of this man's betrayal and his treachery that he helped the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala try to come and destroy the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it became a place where the Arabs would come and stone. So finally, Abraha, he reaches the outskirts of Mecca with his big army. And on the outskirts of Mecca, there are people grazing their camels. So Abraha camped two miles out of Mecca. And he's a general. He knows how to, how to play the war game. He decided to send a battalion of, of horse riders into the city. And they collected booty, they collected animals, they collected weapons, they collected wealth and brought it back to Abraha. So part of what they collected was 200 camels of Abdul Muttalib. 
200 camels of Abdul Muttalib. And you know who Abdul Muttalib is? He is the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdul Muttalib was without question the leader of Mecca and everyone of Mecca, they respected him as their leader. So Abdul Muttalib, he sees what's happening. He sees this, this Habashi man with a huge army. He has come into Mecca. Abraha, he sends a delegation inside the city, send me your chief. So they send him Abdul Muttalib and they say he was a man of very imposing presence you know imagine him age wisdom very handsome and and can you imagine this man shares a DNA with the Rasul so when Abdul Muttalib came to meet Abraha Abraha was sitting on a on a throne on a portable throne that they used to carry with them on their travel so Abraha is sitting up on that throne when Abdul Muttalib comes in and Abraha sees him for the first time, he is struck with awe. Abdul Muttalib was a person, if you just see him, you will automatically have reverence and respect for this man. Some people, you just see them and you automatically feel a respect for them. So Abdul Muttalib was one of these type of people. He was very handsome, very good looking, and he just commanded a type of respect to everyone that just laid eyes on him, they automatically respected him. So when he came in the room and Abraha saw him, Abraha actually got off of his throne and he sat down on the floor with Abdul Muttalib. Out of respect, he actually sat down himself and sat with Abdul Muttalib on the floor. And Abdul Muttalib spoke to Abraha and told him, I would like my 200 camels. So Abraha says, when I saw you, big, huge, handsome man, very eloquent. I was very happy. I thought this man here is a very honored leader here. But now that you're asking a favor, you have expressed your foolishness. We are coming to destroy your honor here. We are coming to destroy the house. And you want to ask for your camels, which is minor. It's a small item. So he says, the camels belong to us. We need them back. As for the house, it has a Lord who will protect it. That's it. Subhanallah. And he walked away. He was given the camels and these people started proceeding towards the Kaaba. So Abdul Muttalib, he goes out and he orders all of the people of Mecca. He says, leave Mecca. So they all leave the city and they go on to the mountains. You know, Mecca is a city that is surrounded by mountains. So they all go up on the mountains so they can still see what's going on. So Abraha and his army now, they start their mission to destroy the Kaaba. So they come close to the Kaaba. And the elephant that is with them, Mahmoud Abraha, orders the elephant to go and start with the destruction of the Kaaba. The elephant actually gets up and it starts walking in the direction of the Kaaba. At this point, Nufail, Nufail al-Khuth'umi, the second prisoner who they had taken with them, he is able to get loose from his chains. And he runs up to Mahmoud, to the elephant. And he says, Ya Mahmoud, kneel down. This is the house of Allah. This is the house of Allah. Kneel down. Don't do it. So immediately when he says this, Mahmoud, he sits down. And they try to get him up and he refuses to get up. So Unais, the trainer of the elephant, he comes to him and he tries to get him up. And finally, he's able to get him up. So the elephant gets back up. And then they order him to continue moving forward, but now he won't move forward. He's up, but he won't move forward towards the Kaaba. And when the trainer, when Unais turns him in another direction towards Yemen or towards this, towards the right or towards the left, he walks. He walks in every direction. But when you face him towards the Kaaba, he doesn't walk. It stopped. Amazing. It stopped. And they began to beat it. It refused. It didn't go further. Subhanallah. Who stopped it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So while they're trying to figure out what to do about this elephant, they see some darkness in the sky. Like some big black, like cloud-like thing. A swarm coming in the sky. All of a sudden, they hear the screeches of birds. And they come from around, you know, the different horizons, if you like, mountains, hillsides. So it looks like the sky is covered in darkness. And these are the Ababil. And each one of these birds, they had three stones with them. One in the mouth and one in each one of the legs. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show his power. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent upon them a babid. They flew over this army. The narration mentioned they would drop these pebbles. They would go through the head and come out the other end. Little pebbles, little bird. When Allah throws, there's nothing to stop. And it totally decimated this army. When a stone hits any one of them, what happens is that the meat and the flesh on the body of that person, it just like falls off of their bones. When it dropped from there, the small pebbles went straight through these men and killed them on the spot. And people were just watching. Allahu Akbar. Didn't Abdul Muttalib say that house has a Lord who will protect it? To this day, you need to remember the Kaaba is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel. Did you not see what your Rabb has done to the people of the elephant? Those who came with the elephant, Allah destroyed them. And some of them whom these pebbles did not get to, they were injured, they went back and they were inflicted with disease. So much so that Abraha himself, his organs began to drop. Literally, his fingers started falling off and everywhere they went, as they went back, they were heading back and his hand fell off. Next thing, his leg fell off and then he died. A very bad death. Alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil. Didn't he make their plans into a disgrace? وَأَرْسَلَ عَلَيْهِمْ طَيْرًا أَبَابِيلٍ And sent upon them birds from every direction تَرْمِيهِمْ بِحِجَارَةٍ مِّنْ سِجِّيلٍ Pelting them with baked stones of clay فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَعَصْفٍ مَأْكُولٍ And he left them like chewed out fodder You know like you've ate grass left here and left, uh, scattered, dispersed, torn apart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed every single member of Abraha's army, including Abraha himself. And it was witnessed by all of the people of Mecca from around those mountains. They saw this happen. And of course, it increased their respect for the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After this incident, the respect that the Quraysh had amongst the Arabs went out of the roof. That these were a group of people who Allah sent birds to protect them. And the Arabs in those days, they didn't have a numerical calendar. The years that they had, they weren't numbered. They used to name the years according to incidents that happened in those years. So the year that this happened was known as Amul Fil, the year of the elephant. And as this is happening here on this mountain, is Amina with her little infant who will be born 50 days from now in an event which will eclipse the year of the elephant altogether. Because to us, bigger than any military campaign is the birth of the Rasul. Uh, now at this stage, where is Abdullah? He's gone on the business trip. Amina is pregnant. 50 days after this, she will give birth to someone very special. The year that Abraha tried to come and destroy the Kaaba, the year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed Abraha and his army, the year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected his house, this is the year that the greatest man that ever walked on the face of this earth was born. The year of the birth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah into that bi'ithnillah wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.